All right, PC enthusiasts, it is time to rise up because we have the new AMD Ryzen 7 1800X processor. That is it right there. This is AMD's first clean sheet architecture in quite some time. I don't think it's quite a decade, but it's, it's close to that. And um, it's a eight core, 16 thread processor that has a base clock of 3.6 gigahertz and a maximum precision boost, that's what AMD is calling it, clock of four gigahertz. Now, that all sounds great. A lot of cores, fast cores, uh, and the price is $500, which is not cheap, but also a long way from the most expensive Intel processors. Question is, does it actually perform? So with as many cores and many threads as this processor has, you would expect multi-core performance to be a big deal. And that is definitely the case here. So let's take a look at some results. Um, one of the best results was from Cinebench R15, a uh, rendering benchmark that uh, gave the Ryzen 1800X a score of 1621, okay? Now, a Core i7-6950X, which is Intel's fastest processor in terms of multiple cores, it has 10 cores, mind you, that's two more even than the Ryzen does. That got a score of 1850. That's a $1,500 processor. This is a $500 processor. So that's a pretty nice result in favor of the Ryzen. Another result that was very good uh, was Handbrake, which is used to encode videos. We do a 4K video encode test. We have a trailer of Elysium that we encode over to H.265. Um, and we do that for all of our test systems. And the Ryzen processor got through it in 287 seconds. Okay. The 6950X did it in 227 and a Core i7 7700K, which is Intel's fastest quad core, did it in 335 seconds. Now, again, this test, you're encoding the video, so you wanted to do it quicker. So 287 seconds, that's not quite a minute less than 335 seconds, which is the best Intel quad core. That's again, that's a really good result. Now, Lots of threads, lots of cores, does potentially mean the single core performance is not as good, and we did find that. In Geekbench 4, for example, this Ryzen 1800X got a score of 4289, all right? A Core i7-7700K got a score of 5482. That's a result, that's a difference of over a thousand points, it's um, roughly 25%. Uh, so that's a pretty big uh, gap in favor of the Intel quad core. Um, now, on the other hand, uh, the 6950X, the extremely expensive $1,500 chip, $1,500 chip I mentioned earlier, that got a score of 3,975 in that test. So it was actually a little bit slower in the single core test than the uh, Ryzen processor was. Um, a consequence of this give and take with the single core performance is slightly lower gaming performance than you would get from the Intel Core i7 7700K, which is considered by most people to be the flagship gaming processor, sort of the best CPU you can get for gaming bar none. So we tested with two games, For Honor and Civilization VI, and with Civilization VI we ran it in DirectX 12 mode. We found that the Ryzen 7 1800X was between even with the Core i7 7700K to around 15% slower than the Core i7 quad core. Um, now that result, you know, that's notable because this again is a $500 processor, okay? It's a top end of the Ryzen line. That Core i7 7700K tends to go for around $340. Now if you're just interested in gaming, that tells you pretty strongly that the Intel processor is still the better value. Now, we have not yet tested the R7-1700, which is AMD's price competitive chip with the Core i7-7700K. Uh, that'll be coming in about a week or so, but if this one can't beat that in gaming, I don't see any reason to expect that the less expensive and slightly slower model uh, would be able to achieve any better of a result. Now let's talk about overclocking. This is something enthusiasts care about a lot. And it's something that might be one of the bigger disappointments with Ryzen because AMD doesn't seem like it's expecting a lot of overclocking headroom with this chip. It already does a lot to overclock itself dynamically, 
to get the most out of any given level of cooling performance that you throw at it. And that means when you start doing it yourself to overclock it, even though it has some really great tools, including new software called Ryzen Master, the ultimate results are not really all that impressive. We got a maximum stable speed of 3,975 megahertz across all cores. So that's actually a little bit lower than the maximum precision boost speed that's quoted by AMD. The difference is when you overclock it, it's doing that all the time on all those cores under stress, whereas precision boost is more of a dynamic up and down sort of thing. So that does give you some performance boost. We saw up to around 15% uh, in the most processor demanding benchmarks in limited scenarios. Other benchmarks didn't move at all. Long story short, if you want to really boost a chip and overclock it, this probably isn't going to be the chip for you. Intel's Core i7 7700K and 7600K still look like they're going to be the kings of overclocking. Now, let's also briefly talk about uh, the platform this is going to be on because you see here we have a, a motherboard and of course you're going to need a new motherboard to go with a new chip. It's the AM4 uh, platform and this here is an X370 motherboard uh, from ASUS. This is the kind of motherboard an enthusiast is going to want. A few things are notable, uh, mainly that AMD says it's going to have this platform extend to 2020. It's promising that you'll still be able to put in new chips based that fit into this platform up until then, if not beyond, which is nice. That gives you a good three, maybe four years of upgrade potential. You're not usually getting that with Intel chips these days. Now in terms of price, pretty competitive with Intel. Don't think you'll save a whole lot or spend a whole lot more one way or another. So does the Ryzen processor manage to dethrone Intel? And the answer is, it depends on what you want to do. Now keep in mind, again, $500 Ryzen 7 1800X processor, in some cases, is getting really close to a $1500 processor from Intel. If you are running things like video rendering, video encoding, doing a lot of bulk photo editing, lots of different uh, filters uh, in big batches, uh, workstation work, anything like that, Ryzen is going to be really interesting because it means you're going to be able to get a much higher level of performance at a reasonable price than you used to be able to. On the other hand, if you are just a home user uh, looking to upgrade your rig, or if you're a gamer, I'm not sure Ryzen's going to really make you run out and want to get it. Um, it is definitely competitive, and it's not going to put you far behind if you get the Ryzen processor necessarily, but the overall value for things like gaming does look like it still trends towards Intel for right now. Uh, the main thing we'll want to keep interested in is AMD's upcoming uh, 5 series processors, which are going to be a little bit less expensive, still going to have a lot of cores, so maybe those will be able to provide a better value for gamers. So overall, Vertica on Ryzen, it is extremely appealing to a certain selection of users and definitely beats Intel in that $300 to $500 market range. Otherwise, it's probably not a processor that's going to uh, set your hair on fire, but still worth consideration and definitely a return to the competition, which hopefully will see Intel be encouraged to lower their prices a bit and maybe put out some new architectures a bit more often.